All right, I'm back again, and um, this is a kind of part two of the video that <clears throat> I put up just before this, uh, where I described the uh, changes that uh, the required changes that I had to make once I started using the new Singularity um, HCS Voice Pack uh, um, system. The, uh, when they updated it to this Singularity profile, it became uh, necessary to do a whole bunch of different things in order to get everything to work again uh, and maybe even work better than before. That's why I'm here today making this second video so that I can uh, test all the changes that I've made and see how they're working. Now, I'm not going to be uh, using voice um, uh, with voice attack. I'm just going to be using the keyboard um, and only the keyboard to do this. So uh, I'm going to show you exactly how this works. And then um, at some future point, I may go back to using voice commands as well. But I, want, I wanted the... Uh, uh, I wanted Astra to be able to respond to keyboard shortcuts as if I had given the voice commands uh, for all the basic commands. <clears throat> I've been uh, working with with a fellow who uh, came to my rescue through the forums named uh, uh, oh, how do you pronounce his name? Um, it's it's uh, spelled T O U I L L E. Uh, but I think it's pronounced uh, Tule, I believe. I'm going to have to go back and check my pronunciation on that. Um, but I'll, I'll say Tule for now. He um, came to my rescue and wrote a secondary profile that I use in conjunction with Singularity. Uh, it's this one here. Uh, now, it's not publicly available yet, but once it comes out of beta, um, he said that I could... Re that I could uh, formally announce it and I'll make some tutorials about that when the time comes. So um, basically that uh, additional profile when it works with Singularity allows me to uh, get voice command responses to key presses. So I'm going to be testing out the ones that I normally use. And as I already mentioned in my um, earlier video, let me um, switch over here and I'll show you. There are certain voice commands that um, I use all the time doing deep space exploration. These have nothing to do with doing combat or um, you know, working around stations or even driving my SRV, because my SRV is out of commission. I don't have one right now. It got somehow mysteriously destroyed and uh, a few weeks ago while I was out in the black. <coughs> and. Um, as a result of that, I uh, am only able basically to fly around and do um, advanced and detailed discovery scans of planets, which is what I've focused on. So all of these uh, commands that you see with yellow uh, rectangles around them are the commands that I'm using. And uh, all of these have been mapped to my keyboard. If I uh, bring up this real quick and I can show you that I've colored my keys accordingly. So these are the keyboard commands that I'll be using, the ones that are colored. The ones that are in dark gray there, I'm not using. So, um, you know, that's basically what, what's happening here. In fact, these gray ones need to be darker gray. Uh, I want those to be this darker shade of gray here. Maybe they are. Yeah, okay, they are. I just, it's my eyes playing tricks on me. So, anyway, those are the keyboard shortcuts that I'll be using. You can always pause and study this if you want. These are all standard commands. Uh, nothing unusual here. I'm using all the standard commands uh, right out of the, um, uh, right out of Elite Dangerous in the uh, options menu. I chose to use in the controls area the HCS PAX X52 Pro 2.2 profile. This is the one right out of the box. 
and I didn't have to make any modifications to that at all, with the exception of adding in, uh, uh, with the exception of adding in, the um, profiles, or the the additional keyboard shortcuts that have to do with things like, the Galnet audio and a couple of other things that weren't included in this release of Elite Dangerous, and they'll probably have those mapped in later on. But for now, I assigned some some keyboard shortcuts that will not conflict in any way with the ones that are already part of this uh, profile. So um, so we're going to jump right in here, and, and I'm going to go ahead and proceed as if uh, in the normal way I'm going to uh, open the Galaxy map and jump right in and uh, just start acting, and we'll see how these keyboard shortcuts behave. Now I have to uh, if I want to type anything, because I'm using this second profile, if I want to type something, like, let's say I'm in the Galaxy map and I need to uh, enter some uh, the name of a star system there, um, I have to come back up and disable the keyboard uh, in voice attack before I can do that, because there's no way to disable keyboard shortcuts using a keyboard shortcut. Hopefully. Uh, Voice Attack will recognize that problem at some point and provide a method. And Toile is uh, working on to see if he can find a workaround, but so far he hasn't. So uh, you know, these uh, uh, this profile, the second profile of his that we're using, um, is still in beta. He's still developing it, and it may get better over time. And once it's ready, we'll make it public. So. Here we are, back in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and open the Galaxy map using the keyboard shortcut forward slash. Galaxy. Okay, and I heard her respond to that. That's good. And I'm going to Colonia. You can see up here, and so uh, the map is plotting the course. I press the same key to get out of the map. And we can come over here and look at uh, navigation. I use the number one key on the keyboard. And you can see that I've got 166 jumps to Colonia. And I'm currently sitting in a system that has been unexplored. So I'm going to open the system map using semicolon. System cartography. All right. Now, I may have already decided that I don't want to explore this system. So I'm just going to make sure. Now, there's really nothing in this system that I want to spend time going to scan. Um, first of all, this star class is a class K star, and uh, if you've been following me, you know that I use uh, some cheat sheets in order to help me make, you know, informed decisions about whether or not I want to go in and do exploration in any given system. So in a class K star situation, the number of light seconds that uh, is the habitable zone or the Goldilocks zone or the, the zone where you'll find liquid water is in this gray uh, band here. So it's between 107 and 480 light seconds from the host star. And uh, this is the only planet that is within that uh, even close to the star, and that is more than 480 light seconds. So even though that's not a landable planet, which means that it could, if it were in the Goldilocks zone, perhaps be terraformable and therefore have some value to me, uh, is beyond that, uh, is beyond the reach of the Goldilocks zone. And most of the rest of these are all landables and also outside the Goldilocks zone. So, um, you know, there's really not going to be anything here that I I want or need, and so I'm going to skip this system. So I'm going to go ahead and press semicolon again. Leaving map. And I've already got my next system selected, but if I didn't, I would come over here to prove that by locking a destination within this system, and now I'm going to press the M key, which should select the uh, the next system in route. System destination locked. Good. Okay. So we've got that going, and uh, 
Now I'm going to, I'm not sure if it's going to work on the joystick or not. It may not work on the joystick if I press the, uh, the, the, uh, the key that I've got assigned to my uh, X52 Pro. So I'm going to try that and then I'll disable it if, it, if she doesn't respond with a voice response. Okay, so she's not responding. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to press the J key on my keyboard. And there she is. Now I've got this set up so that it should do a safety jump every time. We're going to a class G star, a yellow white star, which means it'll have a white yellow, a yellowish tinge that applies to everything. Now I'm going to press the plus key on my numeric keypad to bring my speed up to 100%. Okay, she responded with that. Now, she should come to a complete stop here um, without my rushing into the planet. And she did not do that. So I had to manually press the X key. Now, she's supposed to do that. Um, let me uh, go back to here. And there is a voice command that I can give and I haven't memorized this damn command yet, so give me a second. I'm going to go take a quick peek at his email. I'm going to pause while I do that because I don't want you to see some of his uh, communications. And so um, I should be back here uh, in just a moment. And it'll be a blink of an eye for you. Okay, I'm back. So this is the line here, protocol override customize my settings. So I'll enable voice here. Protocol override, customize my settings. Comply. Okay. All right, so in here, it should work with extra content. This is all part of the uh, singularity uh, um, upgrade that uh, voice that HCS provided. Always on frequency. See, this is supposed to work because I enabled it here. Let me save changes and then I can quit out of voice attack momentarily here in case uh, maybe I needed to do that. And I'm going to hide that. Okay, Welcome now. Back. So, Checking all systems. so when we make our next when we make our next jump, we'll see if we get a safety jump that time. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and proceed as usual. So I'm going to do a manual scan. So it's, it's doing a basic scan or a detailed surface scan of the star, and I'm going to press my trigger key, which I have assigned to the a detailed surface scanner or the advanced discovery scan. So now I know about the system. And I want to open the system map again using the semicolon. System map. Okay. Good. Now we've got two stars and just one planet. This planet this is the distance of this planet from the main host star. So this star itself is a class K star. Again, that would be 107 to 480 light seconds. I can verify that because my memory is not very good. So, 107 to 480 light seconds. 
so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look and see how far I'm going to see how far this star is. If it's not too far away, then I may fly up to it so I can get the distance on this planet. And if that falls within the Goldilocks zone, I know it's a high metal content world and possibly a terraforming candidate. That's what I want to know. So let's see how far away that star is. Okay, it's very close. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to top off my tanks first. 25, sir. And I set my speed to 25% uh, by pressing the number one key on my numeric keypad. I got to be really careful not to overheat. So I'm going to try and keep my temperature under 70. Fuel scooping complete. All right. Now I'm going to go full speed ahead. 100%. Press the number one key to do that. And I'm going to get to this star, and when I get there, I'm just going to... I'm getting a detailed surface scan on it now, but when I get close enough to it, I'm going to measure the distance away from that one planet. Okay, now I've got captain's log running as well, but I need to enable the overlay. So now I've got that up top there, and now I can use my my Alt-C key to bring that up. I'm supposed to bring it up. And it's not. So I'm going to stop all engines right here. All stop. And I'm going to go into that profile that he created for me. And I'm going to disable the C key because I don't actually need that one. So I select his profile, I go in and edit it. I'm going to look for the C key. There it is down here. I'm going to select and disable that by checking this box. When I say when I press the C key. That way it's not going to do anything. This is um, this has got ship commands for engineering. I don't need it, so I'm going to dis disable that. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to press Done. And I'm going to quit this again. And I'm going to relaunch it. Let it finish initializing. All right. Good. I'm going to make sure I disable voice commands. I'll leave the keyboard enabled. I'm going to switch back to the game. And now I'm going to try Alt-C again, and now it works. So I, that's how you can disable any of his custom commands, just like that. All right, let's go ahead and we'll speed ahead again. All right, now it's not responding. Number keypad, unable to execute command. Every command by name's command not available. Huh. Well, that's interesting. That's real interesting. Oh, because I didn't go back to the singularity profile. All right. I forgot to do that. 
All right. So I'm going. Embarking on an unprecedented journey. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just to play it safe. I'm going to quit that and relaunch it again. All right. So keyboard is enabled and voice back, commander. voice commands are not. That's good. Checking all systems. All right. So um, okay. So now it'll work. So I'm going to press the plus key to get go to full speed ahead. One hundred percent no, sir. And then when I get close enough, when I get within about nine seconds, I'll press the number two key on my numeric keypad, which will drop my speed to fifty percent which is the right speed for making an approach without overshooting. Fifty percent speed. Okay, that worked. I'm just going to get right up on the star here and then I'll drop my speed to zero when I'm right up next to the star. Stop all thrusters. Okay. Make sure my temperature doesn't climb too high here. Turn the nose away a little bit. Okay, let's look at that uh, planet. How far is it? That's 95 light seconds. Remember, it's supposed to be 107 to 480 to be in the Goldilocks zone. So this one is too close. It's going to be a hot world, and it's not going to be terraformable. So that's not going to. It's not worth going there and scanning it. I mean, it's so close. I might as well just because it'll be a high metal content world, which has some value. If you want to know what those values are, I have a reference here. You can see high metal content worlds are 37,000 if they're not terraformable, 420,000 credits if they are terraformable. And what we can do is we now that we will select that world, and now we can look at the silhouette image to the left of the HUD which I know that image, that is a high metal content silhouette. It's not ambiguous. Some of them will be high metal content or rocky bodies, but this is definitely high metal content. So we'll go ahead and fly to that one and... 100%. And we'll um, just do a detailed surface scan on it, and uh, that way we'll pick up um, 37,000 credits. It's not that far to travel, so why not? Getting the scan data now. I'm going to overshoot it because I didn't drop my speed. All right. So we'll just come around yes, here. Sir. 25%. I was just thinking about the next step <laughs> and I wasn't paying attention. I press the number one key to drop my speed to 25% and I'll just get this scan data now. All right, and you can see up top there, it's a high metal content world. And you can see on the right in yellow, it says that that was worth 37,367 credits. All right. So now I'm going to go press the M key to select my next system. Locking system destination. The plus key on my numeric keypad. And the J key to make the jump. Now we'll see if this is going to be a safety jump this time or not. If we're going to a class K yellow orange star again, the color of the star affects the appearance of the planets, which can. 
which can um, also influence my decision about whether it's worth going to. I'm going to keep a finger on the X key on the keyboard just in case. Exit is she dropped the speed all by herself. Scanning now. Okay, she said she was scanning, but the scan didn't happen. And the de and my uh, detailed surface scanner or advanced discovery scanner wasn't active. So I'm going to manually select to scan. Okay, now that that should have happened there. Um, it says it's unexplored. Oh, I pressed, uh, I was using my, my um, X52 Pro Hotas, uh, and uh, the B button is what I have assigned to select the next uh, target. So it should have done the scan, and it did once I positioned it in the center of my screen. I'll hold down the trigger so that I can get a an advanced discovery scan of the whole system and there's two objects in this system so I'm going to open the system map system cartography and these are just stars and uh, not very valuable I'll close the map Glazing map and let's look at the distances too far to travel really for either of them the one that's closest to us that would be probably a uh, probably a class L star. We'll look and see here. Look at it. Yeah, it's class L uh, red dwarf. And the one below it is probably either an M or a K. I'm going to guess because it's a little bit redder that it's an M. And it is. And the one up on top is a K. So you can see there's a subtle difference in color between them. And this is one of the things that I'm working on teaching myself. Exiting them. Now while I'm at it, let's check a couple of other uh, things that I've got mapped here. I'm going to go back to my, um, to this, let's see, you know, I'll go back to this. So page up and page down increases and decreases sensor range. So that's one of the things that I wanted to test to see if those work and if she says anything. So I'm going to use page, page down, page up, page up, page up. So the key is working, but she's not saying anything. And I don't know if she's supposed to or not. But I, uh, that may be one of those things that he hasn't yet mapped to the voice. Let's see what else we've got that I might test. Now we've got the, the external camera tools here. I've already tested um, now these ones that I encased in blue I really didn't need to do that. All of these that are in this larger yellow rectangle all have to do with camera behavior when you're in the external camera. So let's um, let's try these out and I don't have all these memorized so I'm gonna have to um, I'm going to have to see how that goes. So let's go back into the game. I'm going to press the space bar. All right, that gave me the external camera. I'm going to press the one key, the two key, the three, the four, the five, and Let's see what the six key does here. Six key. Oh, for co-pilot too, but there isn't another co-pilot seat. Okay. Seven should be camera front. <laughs> I need a new paint job. I've been out here too long. And number eight, camera back, and camera nine is the low camera. So eight and nine. All right, so we've got those. Um, let's see, let's go to eight, 
And then in addition to that, there's the free camera. I've got that one assigned to my my HOTAS on the C key on my HOTAS. So I'm going to press this, press that. And now the uh, the AWSD keys should allow me to move forward and backwards. And I can toggle. Let's see what else do we have here. So I can use the the uh, ADR ADRF and W keys for camera left, camera right, camera up, camera down, camera forwards, and then up here the S key for camera backwards. So um, let's see. Let me memorize these W and S for camera forwards and back. Okay, that makes sense the A and D keys for camera right and left, the R and F keys, okay, for camera up and down. So R, F, A, D, W, S. Okay, what else do we have that's camera related? I think there's some others here. I just I'm not sure where they are here. Let's see. Z and X are I think zoom in and out. That maybe only for the galaxy map, but let's find out. Z that okay. Slowing to a full stop. Yeah, the X key just did what it normally does. Now, um, on my HOTAS, I believe that I, I can use the, um, see, I think if I use the A button, yeah, see, that's stabilize, stabilize off, stabilize on. So when stabilize is off, if I'm controlling the ship, which I switch to using the C key, there's that, there's that. So I'm now controlling the ship, making it um, um, you know, pan left and right in its rotation and as it does, the camera is tracking it. If I want to, let me see here. Um, I have to remember these controls because I'm really, there we go. So the A key when I'm, if I'm, if I'm here and I press the A key, I'm controlling the camera. If I press the A key now, I'm still controlling the camera, but if I press the B, I shouldn't say key button on my hot house. If I press the A or B button in this case, now I should be controlling the ship. If I use the A key, I lock myself to the ship. If I press the A key again, the ship is now freewheeling and it does its own thing. And then if I If I, let's see, I got to remember these controls because there's a lot here. All right. Anyway, I can see that the keys are working. I'd have to memorize them. I'll do that later on. So I'm going to press the space key again. That puts me back in the seat. And now, <clears throat> let's see, what else can I test while I'm just sitting here? Um, I've tested the system map and the galaxy map buttons. I can use the up, down, left, and right arrows to change my engine configuration. 
So left, left, right, right, up, and down to reset everything. So I'll put it all on to engines and maybe one. No, I think I'll just put it all on engines. I don't need to have anything to weapons, so I'll do that. Um, all right, let's see. I, I'm not actually using the comms panel, but I can select it with the one, two, three, and four keys. So those are multifunction keys, obviously, depending upon the mode you're in. So one, two, three, and four. I can use on my HOTAS throttle the E key, which will recenter me. No, it, that didn't do it. I, I, I used the, um, the clutch key on my, on my um, joystick to recenter. Now, if I hold down the E key and then the, the, hi -hat, the, the hat key on my throttle, if I go up on the hi-hat, I should now be able to use the A, S, D, and W keys to pan around. If I press the E key again, let me go off center a little bit here. If I press the E key again on my throttle, that centers me up. So those are still working the way that I had them set before. Let's see. Um, left shift is user interface. Yeah, so that just kind of backs me up there. Um, I tested head look there. I've got Z, that would be um, flight assist or drive assist, and insert and home for lights and cargo scoop. Now I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I can't deploy the cargo scoop right now because I'm, I'm still, uh, frame shift is still active and I'm, I'm still in super cruise, but, um, but just stopped right now. But when you're in super cruise, you can't deploy the cargo scoop but I can test the lights. Uh, I would have to step outside if I wanted to see those. Um, I think I can do that. Let's see. Um, see step outside, get the, the front view, and now I should be able to press the insert key. Lights on. Yeah, good, that worked. Off. Good. So that, that's working. Um, okay, what else? Let's try the flight assist. Using the Z key. Okay, that's not doing anything. Now that may not be... Well, that's supposed to work. The Z key is supposed to be flight assist on and off, isn't it? According to this, it is. Oh, it's because I'm in super cruise. I forgot. You can't disable um, flight assist when you're not in super cruise. So I'll do that the next time I come out of super cruise. Silent running I don't want to do, especially when I'm close to the star. Uh, so let's see. And I've tested these guys. Tested those guys there. That one. I've tested these guys. Um, let's, let's now look to the right here. Okay, so we've got equalized power. You know, I've tested those. E and Q. Now, I'm not sure. I, I think there may be a problem with those. Uh, Two-wheel um, suggested that there might be. And I'm going to just check and see what happens with that. So E and Q for previous and next panel. So first of all, I'm going to go over here, 
I'm going to use E. Okay, that is choosing next. Q is good on that side. Okay, let's go over here. Q and E using E. Good. And Q. Okay, so those are all working. Um, where am I? Oh, right there, okay. UI up, UI down, UI left. UI right has to be specially mapped. I, I have that these all mapped to my HOTAS anyway, but I'm just testing them. So I'll try the WSA keys over here. So Okay, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Let's see, Q and E. All right. That's not doing anything. So let's see that I uh, come over to modules. Um, let's try this. Okay, so I'm, this is my my hat switch on my throat on my uh, joystick, and that is going left and right correctly. Went up. Now I should be able to use that same thing to go through these, and I can, and I can use up and down on the hat in order to go up and down on that. The W and S keys aren't doing anything there, however. So UI up, down, and left. So those don't appear to be doing anything unless I misunderstand their meaning. Um, which I don't really care about because I do it with my HOTAS anyway. The landing gear and orbit lines, I'm sure that those still work. I can't deploy landing gear because I'm in super cruise, but I can turn on orbit lines if I want. That's They're on. I can see it down there at the bottom of the screen and to the left. Acknowledged. Okay. So she actually is responding to those. Um, uh, well, I haven't tried... I haven't tried this one, the number pad forward slash. I'm going to clear this star. I want to get put some distance between me and it first before I do that. And then I'll see if I can leave Super Cruise, disengage Super Cruise, and then re-engage it. Um, I'm actually not using this increased weapon power one because I'm doing deep space work right now, so I didn't, just didn't need any of that. So I'm going to remember to check that as soon as I clear the star, the uh, numeric keypad forward slash. All right. Uh, okay, I think we've tested them all here. All right. Okay, so th th those are the basic tests. Um, I'm going to just continue doing some flying around here now. And uh, I'm going to start off by scooping here. Understood. 25%. Again, I just used the number one key for that. And I'm going to press the M key to select the next system, next system en route. Destination confirmed. There it is. And I'll finish scooping, and then I'll clear the star, and then I'm going to use the forward slash camera numeric keypad in order to see if that will disengage my super cruise. I use the E key to center up. Plus key. 
This is pretty good. Um, you know, I'm happy with this because I, as I do these, these videos, I like people to know what it is that I'm doing. And uh, her voice uh, basically, you know, brings all that to the fore. So I'm gonna press the X key to drop my speed a down. Engine, slowing to a full engine stop. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna press the forward slash key on the numeric keypad. Disengaging. Perfect. I was wondering how to do that with the, with the keyboard shortcut. And now I can re-engage that. Unable to comply. Uh, frame shift online. Okay, now, why not? Let's see, I press... It may be that the forward slash key on the newer keypad... Let me see what what message I got over here. Unable to engage Super Cruise while cooling down. Well, I didn't see anything indicating that it was in a cool down state. There's usually something down in the lower right corner, of just below the fuel and cargo scoop and mass lock landing gear indicators that lets you know you're cooling down. So let me try it again. Engaging Super Cruise. Okay, maybe I, maybe I didn't see that it was cooling down and 100% speed 100% engaged very good okay so those are the basic tests and now I'm just going to do what I do and use the keys without describing what I'm doing and if I run into any issues then I will, um, I'll document them here. So I'm going to start by pressing the J key to make the jump. Okay, so any monologue now is going to be just me talking about what I'm doing as far as exploration. So we're going to a red dwarf here, a Class M red dwarf. A Class M star. The habitable zone is between 0.51 and 200.85 light seconds. Engaging exit protocols. Okay. Completing system scan. Stand by. Gathering information. Cartography has now been updated. No, she's not doing any of that. She's not doing these automatic system scans. Now, there, I may have to enable that. Um, if I use these commands as protocol override, customize my settings, I may be able to make that happen. Protocol override, customize my settings. Protocol override. Customize my settings. Right away, Commander. All right. So let's see what kind of things we can do here. It's a little small for my bad vision. Um, let's see stations. Let's look in miscellaneous and see what is there. Low fuel warning, listening control, a profile startup. Actually, I'd rather that she's not listening when we first started. Awaiting orders when dropping from super cruise. Uh, how should you be referenced, commander or captain? I think I'll go with Captain. <laughs> um, head tracker docking control. This can switch it on and off when docking and undocking. That's kind of interesting. I'm not using it right now. I do have a head tracker, but I'm not using that right at the moment. 
but it's good to know that's there. Um, so I'd have to set that up anyway. So that's everything in miscellaneous. Uh, I don't have any other crew members right now. I'm not anywhere near any stations or uh, worrying about crew assignments. Speech training, that's interesting. Open window speech training directly from here. Huh. <clears throat> you know what I'm going to do? Um, I would like to add a new voice command. I don't know if I should do that from here or just go in and modify the singularity profile. Uh, which is how I've done it in the past. We'll see. We'll see in a moment. I want to. I want to look at this keybind creator. Configure your bindings to work with HCS voice packs. Hodas joystick, keyboard and mouse, gamepad, other controllers, custom binds. I'm using this one right now. Let's see. The keyboard creator, this will add all of your unbound controls for Elite Dangerous in terms of the key presses that the HCS voice packs require to be fully functional. It's not designed to set your keybinds up for you. That's your responsibility. Note keybind files and folders. Edit keybind files and folders at your own risk. Back up your binds folder first. Yeah, let's see. Frontier development will be dangerous. Options. That's always a good idea, huh? Maybe I'll do that. Go to my finds folder here. Just back up one and just sweet scan, restore, include in library, pin to start. So I don't see any duplicate here. I'm not a normal Windows user, I just have a Windows computer specifically for Elite Dangerous. I normally use, <laughs> I normally use, um, just copy. All right, let's now try and create a new folder, find backs. Backups. Oh, I have my cap locks key on. Let's turn off the cap locks key. And try and paste. Good. So I put a copy of my binds folder there. Got my binds folder. Good. All right, so a new set of binds will be created in your custom binds folder. When you next start Elite, it will be available for you to choose in Elite Dangerous Control Settings in game from the drop down list of bindings. If a command is found, that doesn't have a keyboard key press, then one will be added to the spare column in the in Elite Dangerous Control Settings in game. Oh. Huh. Huh. 
early. I'm going to give that a shot. Um, I'm going to create it. So what did that do here? That must be this one here. Um, all right. So I've done that. Now that may mean that some of the key presses that I do on my HOTAS may now work um, to invoke vo voice commands. And I'll, I'll find out about that in a moment when I restart. But I just want to see what else there is here. And by the way, um, if I didn't know about this, this thing that you're supposed to say, I would never have been able to see this. Um, have these, and have these options. <laughs> I think I just muted my microphone in time. I had to sneeze. Okay, so I want to check this extra content one now and see what else there is. Extra content, stars and planets. Does that mean that she would tell me about these things? Um, explorer mode, the expanded explorer mode, it's my understanding that if you enable that as well, it will not only bring you to a full stop when you arrive at the star you've jumped to, but it will automatically select the next the next system in route. Um, and at this point, I'm not quite ready to do that because I want to scan the star that I first. Um, the interaction mode, um, you can have interactions with your um, with your crew if you turn that on where they will chit chat with you a little bit. And for now, I don't need that. If I wanted Galaxopedia, um, I can enable it right here so that it auto it's automatically available to me. Quantum Theory, Constellations, but a uh, with the Astro Must Ask means that she'll ask if it's OK to to speak in interaction mode. Um, so maybe if, if she's going to ask, maybe I will. I'll enable these, and I can always turn them off later. As long as she asks first, I'll be OK with that. Stars and planets can be done by voice as well. Stars and planets enabled can be done by voice as well. What does that mean? Does that mean like scan the next star, scan the next, scan the planet? Maybe. I'll enable those, and when I start using voice commands, we'll see what happens. I wonder if I have voice disabled, if this will come up if she'll ask. And I won't be able to answer if I have voice disabled. Though I do have that assigned to a numeric keypad. That you can control. Well, we'll find out. I'm going to do this. And I've attempted this keybind thing, so I'm going to save changes. I'm going to disable voices. In fact, I'm going to disable the keyboard for now. And I'm going to quit out of voice attack first. And then let's go back to the game. 
I'm going to exit the game. And then I will relaunch voice attack first. I don't know if this is going to make any difference at all. I'm just waiting for Singularity to initialize. And it's waiting for me to log into Elite Dangerous. So let's do this. And then I'll select the, the keyboard assignment that it gave. I've got a backup, so I can always go back to the one that I originally used. But I want to see if there's any difference when I uh, execute certain commands from the HOTAS. What a pretty game this is. <laughs> they really do beautiful artwork on this. Okay, let's enable the keyboard there. And we'll press options. Controls, and then okay. So this is the one that they just created right there. Select that and apply. I'm not doing anything else with it. and we'll see how things perform. Now, one of the things that I can also do, and this might also be worth doing, is this, is, this was generated using a third-party program that maps everything that I have set. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up in another window. I'm going to hold down the control key when I click the back arrow. That should take me back to its configuration pane in a different window so I can com do comparisons. And then I'm going to choose the file that I want to use. It's going to be this, this one right here, which was just created today. Today is the 17th. And the time is 5.17, yep, it was just created. So this should be the one that I'm currently using. I'm going to press Open and Generate Reference Sheet. Here it comes. Um, judging by this first part, this looks the same. I don't think anything there has changed. And as far as keyboard bindings go, I'm pretty sure that these are the same as well. I don't see any outstanding differences. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit Acknowledged. here. Oops. Disable keyboard shortcuts if I want to zoom. Okay, let's go back here. And now I can hold control and hit the plus or equal key. Good, and that's going to bring it up in size. Try and get it to the same size as this one before it. A little bit bigger. Uh, 
this. I think I make this one one smaller. Okay, that's going to be pretty close. So let's just, I'm going to do kind of a visual comparison here. I'm just going to go back and forth. Oops, better go in the right direction now. This way. I'm looking at the, some of these were custom ones that I put in um, all by myself, like uh, right shift, right alt W for engine color. Those that was one of those that uh, HCS Voice Packs warned me when I first uh, started using the new version that I had to manually set these up myself. So apparently, it is respecting all of those that I set and it's just adding any extras. So based on that, just by looking at the number of columns, and here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items there, and starting from the top of that column, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like there's one extra one somewhere, you know, because these are going from top to bottom, left to right. So somewhere in here, there's one extra one that got added. <laughs> I have no idea where that is. Um, let's look at the bottom of these and see if we can compare them here. So I'm just going to read these camera forwards. And that's camera down, not camera forwards. So camera forwards got pushed up. So this this column got pushed up from the bottom. At the top it has space UI select and here backspace UI back. So that means that it was that this one was pushed forward, so something was added maybe into this column or one of the columns before it. So let's look at the top there. Right arrow, increase weapons power. And this one, left arrow, increase systems power. And the right, up right, uh, where is the right arrow? Ah, uh, left arrow increase, right arrow increase system power. Okay, yeah, so let's go back here. This is m my old one. This is their new one. And we've got left arrow here. That means, okay. That means that that came from down here, left arrow increase system. Okay, so this column, uh, there's still something in front of it that's pushed it up. Let's look at the top of this one. S for backward thrust. S for backward thrust. That means that the change took place in here somewhere. So. See if I can just recognize it by looking. I don't know. Uh, increase. Okay, I'm gonna have to look at these. I'm gonna. I guess I'll do them like. I'll see if this should be heatsink is one, two, three, four, five up. Let's see what we have here. Um. One, two, three, four, five. Heat sink. One, two, three, four, five, six. Heat sink. One, two, three, four, five. So it's 
came after heat sink. Uh, which one is it? Shield cell, charge ECM. Shield cell, charge ECM. Equalize increase. Oh, right control, right alt H, primary weapons. That might be it. That's it. Okay. So they added right control, left alt, H primary weapons. That accounts for the one extra one right there. So that's it. Okay. So th that's the only thing that they added. But everything else should be the same. All right. And I'm not using not using weapons. I have them on board, which are just eating up a lot of space on my ship and extra weight. I wish I hadn't put them all on board. But, you know, one of the things that I'm going to do, and I know that I'm kind of changing the subject here, but I'm when I get back to the bubble where I can also go visit the engineers, I'm going to buy an anaconda. And uh, I'll have enough credits to do that, and I will also have gathered enough materials to engineer it the way I want. And so this is a picture of what I want. Um, this is the, at least the minimum configuration where I've got a lot of engineering that I'm going to do and different things. But uh, I should have a maximum jump range of about 52 light years. I'm going to be carrying a mining laser. Uh, and that's actually going to be the only hard point that I need to carry. Because I, I, I'm not going to run into any any need to do battle with anybody. I'll run away if I run into them out in the deep, but I don't think I will. So, um, yeah, that's kind of my, my future plan for this. Okay, so really this, this is almost exactly the same except for uh, the secondary weapons, but I'm not using the weapons anyway, so I can still use this. Okay, so we did that, and we checked that. So I'm going to continue to fly here for a little while. I'm going to only be able to what do this board? for another half hour or 40 minutes, and then I'm going to have to go cook dinner. But so far, I'm very happy with the results. And I will start checking the, um, the, the voice commands. Um, On board scanning complete. Oh wait, there is one thing that I would like to do. Um, this protocol override customize my settings. I'd like to... Huh. How did that get turned on? I'd like to give, um, give her... Um, protocol override. Let's see if I can change that command or add to it, P-R-O-T-O-C-O-L, protocol override, proto-C-O-L, override, When I say protocol override, this is a command prefix. And then what does it do? What does it call next? Protocol override. It's the second half of that. Customize my settings. C-O-M-I-C-E. I think they misspell it. They do.
Does that mean that if I just say customize settings? Okay, do we have a open the set settings? Open the settings. Okay. Open settings. Okay. So, just T O M I Z E S E. Cream has spelled it. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to add to this. Customize the my or the settings. Open settings. And I guess if I put this inside of these and a panel or window. I'm going to try it, try it this way. I just want to see what will happen. Quit and relaunch. Actually, I may even want to set a keyboard shortcut for that. I think I can do. Um, as long as I don't conflict with something else. Is right control Maybe I could use right control and I'm going to try that. That's the other thing I want to do. Customize settings, okay. When I press, can let me do this. not letting me do that. It looks like I need the prefix. If, if I'm understanding this correctly, I don't use this very often, but if this is a suffix, that means that this only works if there's a, if I preface it, with the protocol override prefix. So I might want to I may want to just protocol override settings. Might be easier to remember. since I can't can I back out of that somehow
So maybe I just protocol override settings. I'm going to try that since I can't use a keyboard shortcut. And we'll see what happens here. I'm going to quit and relaunch. You're embarking on an unprecedented journey, the like of which can only be compared to pioneering discoveries and adventures undertaken by notable explorers be such quiet. as Vasco da Gama, Captain James Cook, and others, endeavoring into the unknown. All onboard components have passed system checks. Protocol override settings. Right away, Commander. Okay, that works. Okay, um, I just have to remember that phrase. Um, keyboard control, do full keybinds check, switch to primary file. Discovery scanner. Oh, primary instead of secondary fire for discovery scanner. Hey, that's that might that might mean that when I get to a star after a jump, that it might automatically do a, an advanced discovery scan. That's kind of what I was looking for earlier. We'll see how that works. I'll save changes. Shut this off. Relaunch. And we'll see what happens. You're embarking on an unprecedented journey, blah, blah, the like blah. of which can only be compared to pioneering discovery. Okay, that, that did it. Stop commands. I'd like to be able to just tell her to shut up, even with this, well, I'm getting a little tired, so I, I think I'll just move on here. Um, I'm going to jump back into the game. And we'll see how everything behaves now. Now, let's see, am I in Super Cruise or not? It doesn't look like I am, but I think I might be. Okay, let's do a... Let's select the star here. Hard points. I must not be in the... It's retracting. Okay. So I'm actually going to have to move away from this star first. Um, so... Let's put this star behind us. More or less behind us. Let's press the forward slash key. Engaging super One hundred percent. Okay, sorry. I did all of that. Now, see, my temperature is climbing pretty high here. That's what I was afraid of. Okay, it's going back down pretty quick now. All right. 25, sir. 
Um, now, I hadn't actually scanned this star yet, so I want to scan the next target ahead. All stop. And selecting OK. Now I'm getting the scan on it. Alright, good. 25%. Now I'm going to get in here close enough. I'm going to do some scooping. Top up my tanks. Let's not overheat while we're doing it. These class M stars can get pretty hot. I gotta watch my temperature very carefully. If you look at my modules here, you can see that I've taken some heat damage over time. Nothing of critical value, but still, there is some damage. And I don't have any um, repair limpets on board, you see, so. So I have to play it safe. All right, let's take a look at this system. All right, so this is a, a class M star. And this is 378 light seconds. And the range is um, 0 .0 0 0.51 to 200.85. So even the closest planet here is too far away for the habitable zone. So, um, and judging by the look of it, these look like icy worlds or rocky ice worlds. They're going to be of low value. They, they don't have enough color to suggest that they're going to be high metal content worlds. So I'm not really that interested. I can't make a lot of money scanning them. So <clears throat> instead, I'm just going to go on to the next system. Selecting next system in route. I had to quit the game, remember, so I'm going to have to open the galaxy map first. So it can replot my route to Colonia. All right. System cartography. All right, so. Exiting. Let's just take a look over here. So I'm still 163 jumps in my thing. And let's go ahead and make this jump. Preparing for jump. Okay, this will be a class K. And remember from our visual images here. Velocity. Class K, 107 to 480. Let's see if she stops on her own. She did. Scanning. Okay, she did not. Oh, she did. She did the advanced discovery scan all on her own. Very good. But she didn't. She didn't um, do a detailed surface scan. Well, good. So we've got the advanced discovery scan at least working. Uh, so I don't have to do that manually if I don't want to. But I still have to select the, the star in order to uh, to get the the uh, detailed scan, not not the advanced scan. So we've got that. Okay, now in this system, what do we have? These, 
planets, even though they may be close, they're not going to be close enough. They're, they're, they're landable, which means that they're not going to be terraforming candidates. So this would be the nearest one. If it was close enough, this is a, um, what, a, probably a class M star as well. Yeah. And uh, remember now that that class M 0.51 to 200.85 light seconds. It's very unlikely that this is within 200 and 200 light seconds of this star. It's most likely going to be a lot farther away. So in my decision making, so in my decision making process, when I look here to see how far away that next star is, it's not that far. And the, the distance of this star from this one is only slightly different. It's only about 71 light seconds different. Now, that's, that doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it could. Since this is close, I'm going to go ahead and just select it and you know, grab the data, you know, take a look and see, because... 25, sir. I see no harm in doing that. When I get to Colony, I can, um repair everything and I can give myself a new paint job. But I am not going to buy a, an anaconda there uh, unless there's a way to engineer it there, but there isn't. But, you know, maybe maybe uh, Frontier Developments will add some engineers out there. I don't know. All right, so we got to clear this star in order, to, in order to get over to that uh, planet, which is as you can see, it's behind the star there. So now I can... Now I can do it. So let's put this guy in our sights. Head over there. Now I can do this in one of two ways. I could either scan this star, I mean I could actually go to the star and then measure the distance to that planet and the distance from it, or I could try and select it directly here and uh, just, you know, make a run for it. Um, because of its proximity, its relative, relative distance away from the primary host star um, of, of the host star for that planet, the second star in here that we're going to. Chances are that there that I'm not going to save anything by going to the star and then measuring the distance. So in this case, I'm just going to go into the system map and I'm going to select this one here, make it my primary target. Exit. And uh, now I'm looking at the silhouette here, and that silhouette could be, I believe that is a high metal content, but it may be a high metal content or a rocky body, I forget. No, it's a high metal content. You can see it right here. That's it right there. So it, it's a high metal content world, so it's going to have some value, you know, 30-something thousand credits all by itself. And if it's with, and if it's, uh, within the habitable zone, we'll find out as soon as we scan it, and we'll find out that way whether or not it's uh, uh, a terraforming candidate or not. The next one after that will probably be too far away. Um, 92, 622, 592. Kind of maybe. Exiting. 
but it looks like it would be a high metal content world from its coloration. Looks like this other one isn't too far away either. Oops. 50% oh. sweet. I was okay there. I just wasn't paying attention for a moment. I was thinking again. All right, so we're doing the scan now on this on this planet. Let's find out whether or not it is terraformable or not. It's always a bit of a guess, but uh, I'm making an educated guess now because I've been learning these techniques. Okay, it's uh, high metal content, but it's not terraformable. And let's see. Now, if we look at this one, oh, lock it. This one is also high metal content, but it may be one of those this landable. Is no, it's not. That's the one we wanted to look at. Blazing them. Okay, so let's go check that one out. in the scan. So I don't know, you know, what its distance is from that star. Maybe we can look when we get there. Um, we can just look back at the star and see how far away it is. But high metal content, but not terraformable. And we're only about a light second away from this one, so... Understood. 25%. On my speed, and... Um, this is its primary sort 21 light seconds away from this world, so, is that right? No, that's B3, B4, this is, okay, this is its host star, and that one is 7,900 light seconds away which is way outside. Actually, this one here is 49 light seconds. And that is the, that is the star about which these planets may be orbiting. Let me uh, look on the map here and get a picture of this. System cartography. Yeah, it's, see, it's the class M star there. So, so the distance from that class M star it, these could have been habitable planets because of their distance from that star because that was within the habitable zone of that star and these are orbiting that star so it was it was a worthwhile look could have paid off big it didn't <clears throat> that's okay pressing the m key locking system destination Full speed ahead. Now, sir. And here we go. We'll say goodbye to this world, which is a high metal content world, and uh, let's see what the system map the said system about it. Or the, yeah. So its atmosphere, 95% carbon dioxide. The um, surface pressure is very high, right? 286.67 Earth atmospheres. That's, they're kind of comparing this against the uh, Earth's atmosphere at sea level. So it's 286, almost 287 times that, which means it's going to be a very dense, very thick atmosphere. And if we go back here, take a look at this for a minute. Where'd you go? Not you. You. You're the one I want to get closer to. Here you are. Yes, sir. 25. Affirmative. Slowing to a full stop. I'm going a little too fast here, so I'm just... There we go. All right. So when we look at this world, 
And if we look carefully, we can try and see its atmosphere as an envelope surrounding the planet. Now, it might be easier to see this if we were on the other side, so, so that we have some, some solar light passing through here, so. Engaging now, 50%. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just kind of travel around to the other side here. So we can see if we can pick up this atmosphere. Understood, 75%. For a little bit, <clears throat> because I'm in its gravity well, it's going to slow me down because I'm really close. Otherwise, at 75 percent, I would overshoot it for sure. But I'm going to see if I if this planet actually has a darker side. It may be catching illumination from both stars, but it seems to be getting a little bit dimmer over here, which will make it easier for us to kind of pick out this atmosphere as an envelope of uh, the thin envelope surrounding the whole thing. So we'll get around on the dark side and then we can let the light illuminate the atmosphere a little bit. So we're starting to get pick up maybe a little bit of so this has got it's a very dense atmosphere but it's very close to the surface that's why that's why we're having a hard time picking it out here all right so let's put a little distance between us and it and we'll look at it from a distance understood 100 percent. I'm going to put a little distance between us and it. That should do it. Slowing to a full engine stop. And then we can take a better look at it here. See, that atmosphere is very hard to pick out here. Usually they're not that difficult to find, so that's why I'm that's why the, my presumption that it has a very, that you can see it there, why, why it has a very thin atmosphere. You can just barely make it out there. Understood. 25. Getting a little closer, we can look there. And if you look closely, you can detect a very thin uh, atmospheric envelope surrounding the planet when you look, uh, when you look right about there in the middle of the screen there. About as close as it gets. Now the reason I want to do that is I like there's a very thick dense atmosphere here. The atmosphere is being colored by the star which is a yellow white star or in the case of a class M it's more of a yellow orange and then that color of light is going to affect the color of the planet and also uh, add a tint to its atmosphere. When you add to that the fact that the atmosphere is thick, so it's it's thick and it's obscuring some of the surface features of the planet. This and when you bad. when you look in here, and you can see that the atmosphere is mostly carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide tends to have kind of a well, uh, it's kind of a you know a dirty a dirty color, um, kind of like exhaust out of your car. Um, only when it, if it doesn't have any other particulates in it, it tends to be almost transparent. But but when it's thick enough, you can see it, it, it adds kind of a gray and green to it. Then there's 3% nitrogen, which is going to add a little blue. So blue and green, you know, um, uh, what is that? When you combine blue with green, you get a blue-green. And then 
1% sulfur dioxide, which is going to add yellow. And then when you look at the composition of the planet, it's 67% rock, 32% metal. So um, it's mostly rock is generally just kind of the color of rock. You know, it doesn't take on any particular colors unless there's high metal content in there. You know, like iron would produce a rust-like color or a reddish color. Sulfur would produce a, you know, a, a yellowish color. So, you know, these are all factors that, that help you to understand what you're looking at. Now, when you're looking at the, at the map of the planet, System you know, you zoom in on it, this is supposed to be a pretty good representation of what the planet looks like up close. And it ain't bad. But you can, if you look at this, you can see that there's not much of an, an envelope around it, whereas this one, on the other hand, has that that white border, that's the, that's the atmospheric envelope. There, you, there it's a thicker, it may be less dense, but not necessarily so, but it's thicker. Um, this one is larger, it has more gravity. The, the, the gravity on this one is 1.42 g. On here, the gravity is 0 0.8 g. So this is half as half the gravitational influence on the atmosphere as this one, which is why the atmosphere would be closer to the surface. Gravity's pulling it in. So uh, the other thing is look at the surface temperature. This is 1,194 degrees Kelvin. It's pretty hot. Um, this one, on the other hand, is 482 degrees Kelvin, which although it's hot, it's not nearly as hot as this one. Why is this one so much hotter? Well, even though this one has a sulfur dioxide atmosphere, this one has a carbon dioxide atmosphere. Carbon dioxide holds heat better. Sulfur dioxide, too, also holds heat, um, but, but nothing like carbon dioxide does. And secondly, the dense atmosphere, the high pressure, tends to heat up the, heat up the atmosphere heat up the the surface of the planet just just like the opposite would be true if you have an aerosol can with gas under pressure and then you let the the pressure out the can gets cold in your hands you so it cools down when you decrease pressure it heats up when you apply pressure so those are all interesting to me to, i find all of this science fascinating because the game respects the science pretty well there's still more to be seen, you know, in terms of deep space anomalies that we're not seeing. Like, for example, um, especially with gas giants, you would expect them to have auroras around the poles. And so far, they don't show those in this game. Maybe those will show up in future parts of the game. Uh, there's lots of space anomalies that they don't show yet. They don't show comets, um, you know, with tails in systems, you know. Is it, they, they don't show... Um, accretion disks around new stars where planets are still forming they may eventually get around to doing that okay um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to stop now because it's uh, like coming up on six o'clock and my son will be home from work and I'm gonna have to make him dinner so I think what I'm gonna do is just line up with our next system so I've got our next destination and route selected I'm gonna pull speed ahead 100%. And then I can put a little distance between me and this. Uh, maybe I don't need to put too much distance between us. Maybe just a little bit here in order to get lined up with this next system. And then once I get lined up, I'll go and make a, a note, just like I always do in the galaxy map about where I was at the end of the day. I create a bookmark to do that. That's how I do it. So it's the gravity of this planet that's slowing me down. The farther away I get from it, the faster I will go. Okay. 
Okay, we'll take one last look at our planet before we go. Alright. So there, there's that planet. Okay. So I'm going to open the galaxy map. And I'm going to select my current location. And I'm going to set a bookmark for that. Which is C32. And I'll come up here. Select that C32 right here. Edit. And let's see now, we're on in-game day 36 today. So I can't type here until I step out of the game and disable the keyboard shortcuts there first. And now I can type E, X, R, 1A dot 036 space dash dash space. So now I've got a bookmark that shows where I am at the end of day. And so if I back out, you can see that bookmark there. And if I back out farther, you'll see all the other day, end of day bookmarks that I created. So this is kind of a way of getting a quick overview of where I've been on the galaxy map. And this is where I'm headed to out here, Colonia. So we'll make that journey when we do. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and power down my thrusters. And I forgot to re-enable those keyboard shortcuts, so let's, let's do that. And uh, I've already powered down there. And then I'm going to press the forward slash key on my numeric keypad to come out of Super Cruise. Disengaging. Yeah, and everything's working. Okay, well, um, like I said, the these uh, voice responses to keyboard shortcuts is, are not a normal part of the voice attack software. And in order to do that, we had to use a secondary profile, which was created uh, for me by a very kind uh, uh, c commander, Toulé. Um, I think he's French. He, he has rough English when he writes, but I understand him well enough. And we've been working together for uh, the last week. I've been kind of he's been doing all the work and I've just been kind of in communication with him as he's been doing it. And he's uh, been working on this uh, second profile here, um, which is still in beta, that's why you see the B there. But uh, he tells me that once he's got all the bugs worked out and when he's added more voice responses to more uh, normal um, um, singularity um, uh, response behaviors, that uh, will eventually um, bring this to the public and make it downloadable and he'll give me a link that I'll be able to share and I will be happy to do that with uh, with anybody who wants it. Um, if you're watching uh, any of my series you'll be able to find it uh, listed uh, forevermore down in my list of links that I always put at the bottom of the description that goes with these uh, YouTube videos. So anyway, I think that we're, we're really done for the day here. Maybe the only thing left to do is to quit out of the game. And uh, let me kind of show you where I, where I left off. I didn't open the game with that, which I normally do. Or I'd open the movie with that. But I will show you, for those of you who have been following my series. Here I am right now. This is um, uh, ED Discovery, a third-party tool that I use for keeping track of my uh, stats as I'm running through the game. And so I'm right at this location here, right there. That's me. And 
this here is are the stats that I was referring to. So today I made four jumps. I only made 124,386 credits and it's been, this is uh, day four since the last time that I played on the 13th. Today is the 17th. So this is in terms of uh, making profit or putting on some miles. Not a good day, but that's all right because I've been doing all this testing today. And of course I've been using Captain's Log, which is right here, to keep track of all of my scan data, my detailed surface scan data of stars. Here you can see any stars in the system that I go to and planets. And I have a history so I can go back here and I could look at others and see what I've done. Like for example here, this is uh, one where there's um, the system has plenty of basic, standard, and premium uh, planets where you can go to collect these materials that you can use to improve your frameship drive performance as well as uh, some basic auto fuel maintenance unit refill materials but none of the others, you no know, standard or advanced ones for SRV refuel, these, you know, it gives you lots of lots of different uh, types of stats. You can look at the planets in the system, you can see what their composition is. If you select them, if the gravity means that you can land on it. Here it will tell you the percentages or the odds of finding any of these materials. So, uh, you know, I, I use Captain's Log as well and I'm just giving you this information if you didn't already know about it. And if you look in the description at the bottom of the video, you'll find links to all of these tools, Captain's Log, um, ED Discovery, and another one that I like to use sometimes um, is ED Engineer. That helps you keep track of the materials that you need to collect in order to get the upgrades that you want with the engineers. And there's links to those as well as links to all of these reference images that I use. I use this one to look at silhouettes, this one that we've been looking at which has all of the various different um, stars that, that may have terraformable planets on them and where their habitable zones reside based on the star type. And then over here I've even got color images of the way the planets might look in the image map or in the, in the system map and that can sometimes help you identify them. But this is where the color of the star will influence the appearance of the planet as well as the atmospheric composition and density. So you may, you may look at this one, for example, that I'm pointing at, and you may not be able to make out those surface features or that it has a, an icy pole. Why? Because it may have an extra thick atmosphere that obscures that in the system map. So you can see that the understanding a little bit about the color of the star and also taking into account the type and density of the gases that envelop the planets, um, you can uh, make a better uh, and more educated decision about whether or not to go visit them for a detailed surface scan, especially if you also pay attention to where the habitable zones are. <sighs> okay. That was a lot, a lot of long wind, so I'm just going to sign off now, and uh, I hope that this uh, was useful to some of you, and uh, thank you for joining me on this brief journey today.